If you're watching this on your computer, you probably have enough to start making games. So if that's you, I would say to work with what you have and progressively upgrade your gear as you outgrow them. Take that advice, especially if you're just starting off because you want to figure out if you actually like game development first or at least some aspect of it before you go out and spend loads of money into high-end tech. But if that's not you and you don't own a laptop or a desktop, then what you can start doing is get an idea of how much you would need to invest in for a PC by figuring out what type of games you're trying to make. Are they gonna be 2D or are they gonna be 3D games? And then from there you can do your research on the different types of game engines that you can use and check their system requirements. For the Gato engine, as an example, your computer needs the bare minimum of at least four gigabytes of RAM, at least 500 megabytes of storage, at least two cores for the processor, and anything that supports OpenGL 3.3 for the graphics will work, but it's recommended for it to support Vulkan 1.2 and for the operating system, you would need at least Windows 7 or greater, Mac OS 10.12 or greater, and any distribution on Linux will work. It would then be a good idea for you to invest in a computer that's a little bit more powerful than the requirements. In the case of Gato, most of the machines that is available nowadays should be capable of running, running the engine and that should get you started in making 2D and simple 3D games. So for reference, I'm gonna list out the gear that I work with. So I have a desktop. In it, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. For storage, I have an SSD that is 240 gigabytes of space, as well as a two terabyte hard drive. And for my processor, I work with an Intel i5, and that's only four cores. And with my graphics card, I have a NVIDIA GeForce 1060. I also happen to own a 13 inch 2017 MacBook Pro. That one has only eight gigabytes of RAM as well as only 128 gigabytes of storage. I'm not even gonna mention the processor and graphics in it. And at the moment, I'm only developing mobile games. So I really just need the MacBook Pro to publish games into the App Store. But other than that, I really don't use it for any real development because I would much rather use my desktop. But with these two machines, I was able to create and publish two games, one that is pretty performance heavy and the other not being as resource intense. But both of these games are 3D games. And so you could just imagine that my desktop would work for 2D games as well. And to give it some more love, it's pretty inexpensive. So for anyone starting out, it would be a good starting point, especially if you're not planning on releasing anything on any Apple system. And, you know, I've been with it for almost a decade now. And really the only thing that I would change is to simplify both of them into just one machine by getting an Apple uh, computer, one of the newer ones that has the M2 chip. And for the minimum recommendations that I'm about to say, just keep in mind that these are based off of my experiences and me doing my general research on what other people are recommending. But the general advice here is the more the better. So for RAM, at least 16 gigabytes is recommended. There's gonna be plenty of location where you'll have multiple programs opened up and deep compiling code. So ideally we want to max out on all the cores we have on our processor. So again, with my setup, I really don't do a lot of development on my Mac because it's just a lot slower having only eight gigs of RAM. It's really just a tool for me again to pub publish things onto the App Store and doing other light activities such as writing, editing videos, graphic design, and other things. And for storage, at least 256 gigabytes is recommended. Before I, I explain why, it's worth saying that this is a component that is easily upgraded for most desktops and you can even account for lack of space with an external storage as well. But I recommend 256 because my MacBook only has 128 gigabytes and it's barely enough to hold the software, which is Xcode that I need in order to publish as well as the files 
I produce from other tools, making it just an even more inconvenient machine to make games in. In terms of the processor, at least four cores is recommended. The internet will say at least six, but I'm getting by with an i5, which has four cores, so you can too. Mind you, I'm making games for mobile, so gauge the games that you're trying to make with other PC slash console games by checking their system requirements and go from there if that's you. For graphics card, a dedicated one is recommended. As much VRAM as you can afford rather than integrated graphics, at least if you're trying to make 3D games. I say that because all throughout high school, I played games using a computer with integrated graphics and that really limited the titles that I could play with it. It could, it struggled trying to run League of Legends even. So you can imagine how it can limit the types of games you can make as well. Now in terms of resolution, it's actually very important. At least have a 1920 by 1080 resolution. Most games are played in this resolution and so you want to be developing and seeing your game in this resolution. For ports, at least a couple of them available is recommended, especially if you're planning to develop games that require plugging in controllers and such. This is something that you can easily account for as well by getting a USB hub. Now for those of you who are wanting to make an upgrade or build your PC now, just know that there are deals out there. So check Kijiji, check eBay, check Amazon, and even your local community for cheap prices. And if you want Apple products, there are refurbished uh, products as well on the Apple website that you can check for cheap prices. And if you don't know how to build your own PC or want to put in the time to build your own PC, there are services out there that you can use. All you have to do is pick out the components and as long as they all go together, everything will be good. And this should go without me having to say it, but I'll say it anyway. Your gear doesn't have to be brand new as long as it works and can run the software that you would need to make games. Don't think that better hardware will equal a great game. What makes a great game is you, not your hardware. Special thank you shout out to the following ongoing generous supporters of my work, making a difference in the world and mine.